Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Tackle Tuesday. On a Monday. The only Tackle Tuesday that's absolutely never posted on a Tuesday because it's my channel, I get to do what I want. Today on Tackle Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about the best sonar units under 500 bucks. And I'm assuming you're looking at these sonar units because it's the first time buying a fish finder. And so I'm gonna walk through kind of what I would have the minimum requirements for these fish finders. And then I'm gonna list off uh, the best ones that I would buy right now. So before we get into the actual list, I wanna preface by saying these are the minimum requirements that I would ask for on a sonar unit. If you have, let's say three or $400 so saved up, I would save up a little longer. That $500 mark, as you're gonna see in the list, they meet all these requirements, so I strongly encourage you to try to save up to that $500 mark. I get it, it's a lot of money, but that $500 mark really gets into the, the meat of the fish finder market. So the first requirement is 2D or traditional sonar. It's not really a requirement because all fishing sonar has it except for just chart plotter GPSs. 2D sonar is great to determine the size of the object or fish directly below your boat because of its color palette. Um, depending on what kind of color palette you have. Mine, the darker red images that you probably see here, uh, these are stronger signals, which usually means bigger fish or bigger pieces of structure or cover that I'm looking at. 2D sonar is universal among pretty much all fish finder units. The second thing is down imaging, down scan, or down view. These are called different things depending on the manufacturer. Humminbird uses down imaging, uh, Lorance uses down scan, and Garmin uses down view. They all mean the same thing. They're looking directly below your boat, a little bit wider sonar uh, cone than your 2D sonar. But what really makes down imaging shine is the separation between fish and a brush pile or fish and the bottom. So that separation uh, is very clear compared to your 2D or traditional sonar. Um, if you fish a lot of brush piles or you fish a lot of uh, rocks or maybe fish that are on the bottom, like walleye or catfish or something that are fairly consistently on the bottom, that separation between the actual lake bottom or river bottom that you're fishing and the fish is very, very clear with down imaging. And last, but certainly not least, actually I would highly recommend you save up, if you don't have the $500 saved up yet, you save up to that mark specifically for this piece of technology and that is side imaging sonar. Side imaging sonar is key when trying to make the most of being out on the water, especially if you're on a new body of water. Uh, side imaging allows you to be very efficient when finding fish or structure uh, you can scan left and the right of the boat, depending on the manufacturer, 100 to 150 feet left and right of the boat. Uh, you can find weed edges, you can find brush piles, trees, rock piles, um, and also schools of fish. I do a bunch of videos on how to use side imaging sonar with my Humminbird unit. You can check those out here um, if you're curious to see what a school of crappie looks like. But side imaging is key with these units. I highly recommend you save up to this $500 mark to get that side imaging. Now, what really separates out the units that I'm going to list are the GPS mapping technology. And some of these units have preloaded maps, some of them have SD card slots where you can upload uh, new maps depending on the region that you're fishing. And that's really what's gonna separate whether the product's number one or number four, as you're gonna see in the list. So let's get right into it. Number one on the list is the Helix 5. Now this is actually the ice fishing bundle model. Uh, but the Humminbird Helix 5 Side Imaging G2 uh, is arguably the best bang for your buck under $500, and here's why. It obviously comes with the 2D traditional sonar, the down imaging, the side imaging, but what sets Humminbird Helix 5 apart from all the units that I'm gonna list is its ability to take a Navionics mapping card and a Lake Masters mapping card. Now for those of you who don't know what those are, Navionics is a company that produces mapping contour chips you can upload to sonar units like the Helix 5. Lake Masters is a separate company um, that produces similar uh, topographic maps and contour maps for lakes. Now the difference is some areas of the country, and you're gonna have to do your own research on this, Navionics is much better in terms of uh, the contour lines being relative to what you actually see on your lake or river. Some parts of the country, Lake Masters shines when it comes to accuracy of contours and depths. Um, so depending on where you live and, and the local lakes that you fish, you want to do your research. Navionics and Lake Masters have their own lists uh, based on region, and you can actually look those up. Just go to navionics.com or Lake Masters, uh, Google Lake Masters charts, and depending on the region that you fish, 
some are going to be better than the others, but the Humminbird Helix 5, because it can accept both of them, that's what sets us at number one. Now, additionally to the Helix 5, let's say you have a smaller watercraft, kayak, canoe, um, sometimes one of those inflatable pontoons, you can buy the portable option. Uh, these usually come with a battery as well, um, as well as a recharging system. These are great for ice fishing as well. I have the Helix 5 ice fishing bundle, which actually comes with the ice fishing transducer, but you don't have to buy the transducer. Um, you can just get the portable unit with a battery and it actually comes with a suction cup. So you can actually take your transducer, apply the, or attach it to the suction cup and apply, attach it to your canoe or kayak or uh, small boat, whatever you're fishing out of. So that is an option if portability is a must uh, with your sonar unit. So I forgot to mention with the Humminbird Helix 5, it actually has Humminbird base map charts built into it as well as the ability to download Lake Masters charts or Navionics charts. So number two is the Lowrance Hook 2 Triple Shot 7 inch screen. Yeah, it's a mouthful, uh, but it has the 2D traditional sonar, the down scan, which is the same as down imaging, side scan, which is the same as side imaging. The only reason this is not number one is because it only has Navionics capability. Uh, the Hook 2 Triple Shot 7 inch screen, you can actually get Navionics uploaded. It's the US Inland Lake Maps. Uh, you can get it uploaded directly into the unit from the manufacturer. Um, it also has an SD card slot where you can upload uh, Navionics as well. Uh, the Lowrance units are what a lot of people would argue are the most user-friendly units. They're fairly basic uh, compared to the Humminbird units, which are more advanced in terms of uh, manual settings. The Lowrance is fairly standard and a lot of people love it for that. Now, the Hook 2 Triple Shot 7 inch screen is two inches bigger than the Helix 5. And if you're mounting it on the bow of your boat or it's at a distance from where you're sitting, maybe at your helm, uh, then the seven inch screen might be a requirement for you. And if you don't really care about Lake Masters versus Navionics, as long as it's a solid uh, sonar unit, then the, the Hook 2 is also for you. Another option that you might be interested in is you can actually downsize to the Lowrance Hook 2 Triple Shot 5 inch screen, which is the one right here. We're gonna pull this out of the box. Um, this one I'm actually putting on my dad's boat. That's what it looks like. Um, five inch screen capability. Um, oh, this one does have a memory card. Five inch screen capability. You can get these preloaded again with the US Inland Lake Masters Navionics charts. It also does have a uh, little slot here. So there is an SD card slot on the Hook 2 five inch screen as well. Um, you could also just put a memory card in there to save waypoints if you wanted to. Um, same with the Humminbird Helix 5, I forgot to mention. You can just put a memory card in, save some waypoints. Uh, but this unit is arguably the most user-friendly unit. So if you're brand new to fishing sonar, you really, have, you really don't want to manually adjust a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of people say this is the most user-friendly unit. Now once you get into the kind of the advanced settings and uh, you know how to use these sonars, you know how to tweak them in terms of manual settings, uh, this one might actually bother you and you may not want to look at the Hook 2s. The Humminbirds are fairly manual user-friendly. Uh, these are just user-friendly if you have no idea what you're doing. Alright, so there's one, two, three, and this is number four, the Garmin Striker 7SV. Uh, this is actually the Ecomap box, but the Garmin Striker 7SV unit is a solid unit as well. Again, it's a 7-inch screen coming in at $499. It uses the GT52 transducer, which is actually the same one that came in this box. Uh, very solid 2D traditional sonar. Down view is what Ga uh, Garmin uses instead of down imaging. And then side view instead of side imaging. Um, Garmin has very clear side view and down view. Um, all these units run on 455 or 800 kilohertz. So there's really no difference. Uh, some people have a personal preference between Garmin, Lowrance, or Humminbird just purely based on the look or based on the color palette that they use. I have used both Humminbird and Garmin, and I've seen some Lowrances on other people's boats. They're all pretty similar within this price range. Now the reason the Garmin Striker Plus 7SV is number four on our list is because of the GPS unit. Uh, the, unfortunately, the GPS mapping unit is a base mapping unit, so it will give you the outline of the body of water, but unfortunately it doesn't have a topographic map or a contour map. Uh, detailing the lake bottom and you can't really get an upgrade with the Striker Plus series. Um, so that is the reason it is the last one on the list. The Striker Plus 7SV is still a solid unit so GPS mapping systems if they're not that important to you you might want to look at it. 
Um, if they are that important to you, I would definitely go with either the Humminbird or the Lowrance. If they're extremely important, the Humminbird Helix 5 definitely shines with the ability to use Navionics or the Lake Masters charts. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the best units under the $500 mark. I hope this video has helped you out. Let me know in the comment section below if you have a specific price range that you want me to actually do a sonar unit test on, or if you have a specific sonar unit in mind that you want me to dive into further detail in one of these Tackle Tuesdays. Uh, you can also message me on either Facebook or Instagram if you have any questions. I appreciate you watching as always. Do me a favor, click the like button and click the share button. I really, really appreciate it if you click that share button. Appreciate you watching. We'll see ya.